In this video, we're going to go over market research and how you can use that to unlock profitable niches for your dropshipping store. What's up guys, Rain Result here, back again with another video. This week, I wanted to make a video on something that is not really spoken about all that much. People in the dropshipping space love to speak about winning products, winning advertisements, their store results. But this one key factor is left out a lot and that one key thing is market research now before you click off this video and think that market research is not for you or not something you feel that will be beneficial for you i'm here to tell you that with the correct market research you can turn unprofitable products profitable and you can take saturated products to unsaturated audiences when i started taking the time out of my day to do some market research before i tested products and developed the skill on learning how to do this, I immediately saw a difference in the results that I was getting. So let's not waste any time, let's jump into the four step process that I use to conduct market research and how you can implement the exact same steps. Before we jump into those four steps, I just wanted to say that I get DMs from people all the time saying, what niches should I sell products in? What products should I be looking to sell? And my answer is the same every single time. Pick a niche, look into some products and make sure that you do market research on them so that you can sell those products to the correct audiences. It's great to know of wonderful products and it's amazing to sell products in very popular niches, but without market research being done, you're most likely going to fail when you test and advertise those products. So number one on my four step process to conducting market research would be to identify your target audience. The first few questions that I look to answer when I'm looking at a product that I wanna sell is, who would I try to sell these products to? What are their interests and hobbies? What age range do they fall into? And what location are they living in? One of my favorite ways to answer some of these questions is just to search up the product on Google, look at competitors' websites, look at their reviews. I'll even go onto Amazon and search the product up there and look at the reviews from people who have previously bought the product. People on Amazon love leaving really long reviews about where they're from, why they bought the product, what it helped them with and why they needed it. I also enjoy going to Reddit and I'll search the product up on Reddit because people love giving their opinion about every single thing on Reddit. So be sure to search the product up on Google and just answer those questions before you look to sell the product. This will just give you a general idea of who is buying the product and what problems it's solving for them and give you a great customer avatar that you can then take and press on the pain points that they have. The second thing that I do and that's extremely important is I validate the demand for that product. I wanna be selling products to an audience if there is no validated demand for it and if people aren't even buying the product that you're wanting to sell. Now, the first way I'd usually do this is just search the product up on AliExpress on AliExpress, it gives you the amount of orders that a specific listing has got. So you'd be able to see if it had 500 orders, 1,000, 10,000 orders. Different listings have different amounts of orders, but I just make sure that people are buying the product. I'll also pull up Amazon again, and I'll look at different listings to see if there's lots of reviews. If there's a lot of reviews on a product, it generally means that a lot of people have bought that product as not everyone who buys a product will leave a review. I'll then also look on social media and on Google to see if there are any competitors running ads for this product, because if there is competitors running ads, that's also a good sign. Brands definitely spend money on advertisements when things are profitable. So that's a really positive sign if you can see orders on AliExpress, reviews on Amazon and competitors running ads actively. That's a great sign that there is demand for this product. Now that these two steps are out of the way, just to recap, you now have a great idea of who you're selling this product to, what they're interested in, and you've also validated that there is demand for this product. Just taking those two steps are really gonna put you ahead of so many other people, but these last two are even more crucial. The third thing that I would do that's extremely important is I look at the history of that niche and I see how it performs over time. So some niches and some products are very seasonal. For example, things for Valentine's, Christmas, fitness products generally in the beginning of the year, whereas other products are more evergreen, things like baby care, home decor, different niches peak at different times of the year. And it's just super important to be aware of what time of the year it is, especially to the countries that you're targeting with your dropshipping store. Understanding your niche's peak times and when those products are most likely to be bought the most will also give you a great understanding of when's the best time to launch that product and will help in the success of, of your overall advertising campaign. And the fourth and final step in my market research process be to analyze the sales data 
and pricing of the products that you're wanting to sell. So it's important to know that when you are selling products to a specific group of people, what financial category do they fall into? Are they heavy spenders? Are they people who are looking for the cheapest go-to? And even the niche you're selling. So do these people who buy products in these niches spend excessive amounts of money on that niche? Or is it the total opposite? Understanding what financial category the customers are that you're trying to sell to will also indicate what pricing you can put your product at and also give you a great understanding of the types of offers that you should be presenting to that audience. So let's put this all into action right now. Let's take this product over here and just run through these four steps. So these are tactical gloves and they have been around for almost two years now, but I just wanted to briefly run down with these four steps with you and explain this process and what it would look like in action. Step number one, let's identify the target audience. So for this product, it's very simple. These gloves are gonna be used for outdoor working, for things like gardening, for things like construction, for things like motorbiking. So we know immediately that this product is targeted towards people who love outdoor activities, who are involved with outdoor work. And for the most part, it would most likely be men as well buying this product. The types of hobbies that they would have would be things like gardening, would be things like farming, would be things like hunting, would be things like building different things at their house, even home repairs. The type of age range that this audience would fall into would be quite broad as there could be young men in their 20s that would use this product all the way up to men in their 60s. So there's no specific, specific age group here that I would target. I'd go a little bit more broad. The second step would be validating a demand. So we can see from the past two years that there's been one company, which I'll put up here, that has been running ads for this product consistently. There is tons of orders on AliExpress. There are tons of reviews on Amazon. So we know without a shadow of a doubt that there is people that are buying this product. The third step would be to see how this market has performed over time. Is it seasonal? Is it not? Is there a peak time? And in all honesty, I feel like this is an evergreen product. It's not weather dependent. It's not seasonal dependent. It's not, you know, based around specific months of the year. This product seems to sell well all year round and it's evergreen. So it's not like we have to wait for a specific day or month of the year to launch this product. And step number four would be to analyze sales data and pricing. So for products like this, we know these are for people who are doing outdoor activities, for people who have work outdoors, who are people involved with gardening, motorbiking. So it's not like they're struggling with money or that they can't afford things. They're definitely wanting to use this to make their job easier or just to assist them overall with the work that they need to get done. With that in mind, we know that we can price this product a little bit higher and we don't have to be scared of trying to be the cheapest in the market. But one thing I would say about this product is most of the times people are targeting this product just strictly to people working outdoors that are gonna help them with different activities, things like building, things like gardening and things like farming. But I would definitely take a little deeper dive into the different niches, maybe even order this product in and think of just a different niche or a different category of people you could sell this product to. For example, one person said that they used these gloves while riding their motorbike in the winter, and they also said that it could help them while answering their phone. So one thing you could always do is target even things like Uber drivers and people who are driving Ubers late at night in cold countries, and you could say, hey, you know, these, these gloves are great for people who are involved with motorbike racing at night or biking at night, or even things like Uber drivers late at night who need to be on their phone, but also need to drive their bike. Just small tweaks like this will help you advertise to the right sorts of people. This will take saturated products, move them to unsaturated audiences, then give you a blue ocean of people to sell this product to that you don't need to worry about competition or any of those other things. Just taking some time, I literally just ran through this without even doing excessive research. I just wrote these answers out pretty much off the top of my head without doing an excessive deep dive. But I just wanted to give you an example of what it would look like while I'm doing that. Now, I know a lot of people watching this will most likely not take action. Although the people who watch my YouTube channel, I know you guys are action takers. You are people who are out on the hunt and you are going after it. So be sure to take some time out before you do launch your next ad campaign to just do some market research. The image that formed in my mind while I was writing up this video was a person throwing a dart onto a dartboard and trying to go for the bullseye and a person next to them that was blindfolded and that was also trying to do the same thing. We all know who will win that matchup. The guy who's able to see exactly a clear place where he is shooting to is way more likely to hit it than somebody blindly throwing the dart in hopes of trying to hit the bullseye. 
You may get lucky and hit it once out of every 10,000 times you try, but the guy who knows exactly where he's, where he's throwing that dart is more than likely to hit it. But with that being said, guys, I hope you have an amazing upcoming week and I'll for sure see you in the next video. Peace. Thank you.